Hey, I'm Alec, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be giving you a beginner overview of all the features within Matter Control. This tutorial will be very specific and detailed, so if you want to jump ahead to parts you know you want to see, go to the description down below or jump to these times. Hey there! I'm Alec from Matter Hackers, and in this tutorial, I will be going over the basics of how Matter Control works, and hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a good lay of the land and be able to easily slice and start your first print. When you open Matter Control for the first time, you're going to be presented with this quick tour of Matter Control. This will broadly go over things like where the buttons you really want to pay attention to are located, and it's quick and easy to follow. This video is going to be a deeper dive into where some of the most important features you might want to know about are located, so we'll just close out of this for now. You can always access it later by clicking these three bars in the corner and clicking Interface Tour. If at any time you feel like the buttons and settings I'm describing aren't where I'm saying they should be, that may be because you're on a different version of Matter Control than I am. I'm on Matter Control 2.0 for PC with build 2.19.2. Along the top, you have several category tabs Store, where you have quick links to Matter Hacker's filament specific how-to guides, and different real-life use cases of 3D printing. Library, where you can quickly see all of your locally stored 3D models and models saved to the cloud, whether they're purchased from Matter Hacker's design store, uploaded by you, or shared by a friend. Hardware, where you can add a new printer to control and use. From there, you'll be walked through its setup process to connect your printer to your computer for printing, which you can cancel if you don't use USB printing. And you have new design. The first time you open Matter Control, you are presented with this creative space that you can use to make anything you can imagine. And then there's the plus button, which allows you to open a new design tab at any time so you can work on more than one at a time. The first time you run Matter Control, you are in this design space. You can load up a part you would like to view or print, or you can start designing something new right away. On the left, you have a bunch of shapes. These are the design tools. You can drag and drop these into the workspace and create your own models within Matter Control by adding and subtracting them from each other. Along the toolbar at the top, you'll find options for bringing in models you have saved to the cloud or your computer, and a variety of buttons for the setup of your models on the print bed. Some of these buttons are also used for design tools for some more intricate designing. When you have something you like, either designed or imported, you can click print, and on the right side here are all the slice settings and controls, but I'll click this pin so that we can see all these settings at once and they don't close away. Once you are here, you may notice a few new additions to the interface. On the right, you have a couple new tabs. Slice settings, where you can change the settings for how the G-code is generated, like a really fine layer height or a really dense print. You have controls, where you can move and tune your printer. Most of the controls in this tab are grayed out if you aren't currently connected to a printer, since there would be nothing to control. Most importantly, this tab is where you go to recalibrate your printer whenever you need to. For advanced users, you can even create custom macros where, with the click of a button, you can send a series of G-code commands to your printer. Now there are a lot of ways to start using Matter Control, so let's showcase how, as a beginner, you may want to work through your first time. Start up Matter Control and log in. This will save your profiles to the cloud, so you can access them from anywhere. Go to the Hardware tab and either add in your printer from an import, create one from our list, or if you've already done this before, select your printer from your list of printers. Since I have a Pulse D232 next to me, that's the profile I'm going to be working with today. So things like slice settings and control options may be different just because of that. Now that I'm looking at the print bed, I'm going to click here with this folder and an arrow so I can open a model I want to import from my computer. This brought in my model, but it's at a funny angle and way too small than I intended. I can click on one of these three arrows around the model to get it approximately where I need it to be flat with the bed. And then I can click this arrow in a box to get it flat with the bed. I can also scale this model. Specifically, I can select if it came in using the wrong units because Matter Control assumes models were designed in millimeters. And I'll do that by right clicking, clicking Modify, Scale, and I'll change Specify to inches to millimeters. There we go, that's the right size. Well, Phil's oriented correctly, he's the right size, but this cube is now at a funny angle. And I can fix that by clicking on the model clicking these four squares up right here that says ungroup. And this will separate them so that Phil is his own model and the cube is its own model, which then I can rotate and click lay flat to pick up the work. I can then modify these separately as much as I want. If I wanted to have more of these models on the print bed, I can select it and click this little plus in the blue box up here, which will duplicate the model. Or I could click Control-C, Control-V, and that'll paste more as well. 
And then I can use the delete key to get rid of them or select them and click the red X. Now if I had a bunch of these cubes all over the bed, it would take some time to get these to be neatly laid out and not just scattered all over the bed. Instead, what I can do is I can go up here to this grid and click the drop down arrow and arrange all parts, and it'll space them roughly centered in a grid shape near the center of the bed. Now for example's sake, I'm going to delete these cubes and swap them out for a ring. Now just for example's sake, I've oriented this ring at a weird angle. Normally you'd want to print it flat with the bed, but this will be better explained in just a second. So fill doesn't need any support by design, but this ring here does. I can click here to generate support, first by clicking the ring, click the drop down, and then click generate. And that will create support all over my models, but I can click individually what I do and don't want supported. So I can go through and click each of these one at a time to delete because maybe I don't need supports in this spot of my specific model. But in the case of fill, I can look from the front and click and drag to highlight everything. Hold control to deselect and click fill. Now just the supports are selected around fill and click delete. And fill is unsupported, but the ring remains. Now that I have the bed set up with these parts, I'll make sure I have the right material selected, the right quality preset, and click slice. I have standard, I have nylon X, I'm ready to go. You can see in the top left here the progress of your slice, and once it's done, Matter Control will jump over to the 3D slice view of the G-code. You also have some options over here for how you wish to view this G-code preview. I have mine set so that I can see the speed at a certain layer. I can also turn that off by clicking this button. If I'm also trying to check if the G-code looks like it's working correctly, I can go to the single layer preview, and I can look at each layer one at a time to see that everything's working properly. From here, if I had changed anything and clicked print, it would re-slice it and send it over USB to my printer. Once the print is started, I can come up here to the top right corner and select my hot end temperature and change that. Maybe it's not hot enough for what I'm printing. Maybe this specific color needs more heat. And if I pause the print, I can use these different presets here, or I could change the bed temperature manually as well. If, however, I wasn't printing over USB, I could come up here to this grid, click export, and then I can export the G code. You want this file to be exported. And I can save that to my SD card or my USB stick and name it. And just like before, Matter Control will do another slice to make sure all your settings are saved and then export. And there you go. That should be enough to get you started 3D printing using Matter Control. You can also check out the help page in the top left for some walkthroughs. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you like that, give us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all the big builds, how to's, and troubleshooting guides I'll be working on. And don't forget, check out matterhackers.com to explore everything 3D printing and to join the community.